Hello, everybody. Anthony Crane here with Pocket Coach. And uh, let's get uh, my screen sharing started. Today's experiment is story writing. Now, this one is not going to be a five minute video, um, but I will cap it no more than 15. But the first five will cover the most interesting things. OK, so let's get that timer started. There are so many things out there on story writing. What could I possibly teach you? I'm going to try to focus on things that you may not have heard in other places, but I will do a quick recap as well um, for people who have never done story writing. If you really need an intro to story writing, I can do a separate video for that. So first, let's look at the problem that the story writing experiment solves. So the problem, we need to be able to capture our work in small nuggets that can be completed in a sprint that provide value to a user that are super lightweight, not not cumbersome, not hard to write, like bookmarks um, for you know chatting later on, and that provide clarity of how do I know when it's done? Okay, so that's kind of the, the idea of a story here. Hypothesis is that if we write stories that describe what the user can do once the story is done, um, we will actually create higher value stories. Because some people create stories that look like tasks, that look like work breakdown instead of value. And so we need to get better at that. Then this happens at feature level or epic level, depending on your vocabulary, and all the way up to the project level, right? So we and your or epic level if you're doing safe, all that stuff. Okay. So time frame six weeks. After six weeks, you'll know whether or not this is working for you. Pitter persevere every two weeks. Um, typical outcomes, you should be able to increase productivity with these stories and predictability, as well as actually, you know, the value delivered to the client. Um, skill growth. You have written well-formed stories and have had them accepted by your product owner. So if that's happened, then um, you are, and by the way, when I say accepted, I don't mean the story. I mean the work related to that story. Okay. Um, and today's shirt is Untamed Chivalry. Okay. So let's get into the, the uh, kit here. So uh, in my kit, we have a, a workshop. Um, there's a long form and a short form of stories. We'll cover that in a different video. Story splitting, we'll probably cover in a different video as well. What to do if your splitting fails. Vertical stories this is getting into the value breakdown instead of a work breakdown for story. stories. Stories are truly valuable. Um, and uh, an Amazon example and some other formats you might be looking at. Okay. Uh, so those are some of the interesting assets, but let's get into this. So uh, this is our user story workshop. It says advanced. Uh, but it really is just our user story workshop. So I'm going to remove that right now. Okay. So let's take a look at the agenda here. Um, there are three parts to this. Number one is recapping the basics. Um, number two, we actually then write stories together. And then number three, we model a solution intent. But the solution intent, honestly, is another skill altogether. Um, and so we'll cover the solution intent in a different video. It's a big gap in a lot of my clients' uh, worlds. So uh, just uh, for real quick on the base basics, the three C's, card conversation uh, and confirmation. Invest is how you make sure they're of good quality. So let's just take a peek real quick. Is a story requirement? Some say no, some say yes, right? And so you can see here why some say no and some say yes, but they're both right. It doesn't matter. They are a form of requirement, but they're not the same as requirements used to be. Here's how they are different. So again, I'm not going to read through all this. You can pause the video and take a quick read on it. Um, but we cover this. We talk about it together. Uh, and then we get into the three C's. So um, we talk about two different techniques on the left here. You see the traditional one on the right. You can see the original user story writing technique. I still have a textbook and they republished it with the left-hand technique. But my version is like, I don't know, first generation, uh, first edition. And so it looks like the right side. So we'll talk more about that in that other video. Um, so we have the three C's. Uh, and then we get into invest, which is independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, uh, small and testable. And we talk about why those things are so important through examples and conversation. So these are the kind of fundamentals of story writing. Okay. After that, we get into the writing of the user stories. How do you identify? So this is the process right here. Okay. So if you've never done story writing from scratch, the first thing you got to do is understand who your users are. Once you understand your users, you create stories for those users. You have more than one user. That's okay. You'll have more a user type and then all the stories. Okay. Uh, some people like to call those personas. Personas was never meant to be that, but lately it's morphed into the same as a user. It used to be a type of a user. So a customer would be the user and then a persona would be a, a you know, a young customer, or an old customer, or a skillful, a technical customer, a non-technical customer. Those were personas and they had names and they had personalities and home addresses and a family. Persona was like a whole person that you could then design for, not just a role, which is how I see it used these days. Um, okay, so... Uh, here's the main process. Uh, and again, we'll run out of time on this, but here you go. Identify the users of your solution. Identify your high level requirements. And there's lots of different names for that, depending on the methodology you follow. Prioritize those high level requirements. Then in priority order, you break down the highest priority requirement into stories. 
Um, you estimate those stories, then you can start allocating to a sprint. Um, and then at this point, you can go to another high level requirement and break it down until your capacity is full. If you're doing safe, you might plan four or five sprints in a row. Um, if you're just doing scrum, it's just one sprint. And finally, you shouldn't, um, if some stories are very large, you should find techniques for splitting those. And we'll cover that in another video. So that's my first five minutes. Um, so story writing in five minutes. Again, there's lots of assets out there to help you do more. Hopefully this was a nice intro. I'm going to show you in the next five minute block, um, some of the more unusual things in our approach here. Okay. So let me uh, do that and hit start. Okay. So in this next five minute block, I'm just going to cover some of the rest of these slides here, uh, just so that you have a little bit more than the uh, outline. So here we have a system called Pixter. Uh, it's um, the green represents uh, new uh, functionality and the gray existing. So you can see our original system handled photographers, but now we're going to add bloggers, moderators, email system, photo printers, and payment systems. So you can see we're taking what used to just be a photo sharing site and turning it into a photo business site. Uh, for photographers to try to make money off their photos. How fun, right? Uh, and how cool that you can see that at a glance. So when you write your user stories, you should write stories for the photographer, for the blogger, et cetera, okay? Um, then we actually use Amazon as our teaching example, uh, just because everyone knows it real well. And so we ask, what are the major high level requirements for Amazon? And it's like, buy a book. Okay, cool, let's decompose that into stories then. Um, so then we get into the exercise where you actually list out your users and then you um, you figure out, you know, that the book buyer might be one, but there are other kinds of users as well. Um, high level requirements. So this is one I wanted to get into. Uh, in Scrum, high level requirements are known as epics. They're basically really big stories that we break down into smaller stories. So if you're doing Scrum or if you're using Jira, uh, you might call these things epics. If you're doing safe, um, you would call these same things features. So unfortunately, features and epics mean the same thing. But where it gets really confusing is safe also has the word epics, which actually means project level, initiative level stuff. So while Scrum and Jira have epic, Safe has and Jira Align has Epic as well, and they do not mean the same thing. A Jira Align or Safe Epic would contain many Scrum or Jira Epics. So these Epics contain lots of these Epics, and that's why you know in Safe they call them features. It's confusing. Um, so we can talk about that some other time. Um, and then even older than that, use cases. The actual bubbles that they put on the diagram, those use case bubbles, if you're familiar with that technology, those were also high level requirements. And then when you went inside, you would see like, you know, stuff inside the, the use case. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you call them epics, features, or use cases. The high level requirements are the big things that we got to do. And for any um, release, for any new product, for any uh, MVP, for any uh, whatever you want that you're building, you want to list out the high level requirements, the high level features, the high level value. And so don't forget features and stories and epics if you're doing safe. All of those are supposed to be value delivery. People see epic feature story and safe and they think work breakdown structure. So they create task, task, task. And that's not the goal. It's value, value, value. Each one when delivered, someone should be dancing a jig. Like, oh, I can do that now, right? So um, keep that in mind. Here we go into an example. So you can see here we have um, a bunch of roles from that previous one, blogger, vendor, photographer, et cetera. And then the feature, this is the thing that they're going to be able to do with our system, blog, advertise, sell photos, purchase photos, et cetera. So you can see features are just a simple name and then you give them a description. Now we have a different feature writing workshop. We can show you more about how to write features, but for now, nice and simple, a feature and a description it has a name and description. Okay. Uh, you can also draw it. This looks a lot like a use case model diagram, but people love the visual. So you can see here, some people prefer the table. They're like, this is good enough. Let me go. Others prefer a visual. And so this is one way to draw the visual where you put the major features in a bubble and then you tie them to people. Again, it looks like a use case diagram, but it's just a way to visualize your features. Um, so what else we got? We break down to an exercise where we come up with features. And then the next step is prioritizing. Um, so from here, prioritizing people think means high, medium, low or Moscow. Moscow is so old school, <laughs> you know, but whatever. Uh, high to low, right? So you stack rank them. Now, the one time that you might use a high, medium, low is if you had a, a hundred features, then you might go for a first pass, high, medium, low, and then the mediums and low, you don't even look at those. Now that you have only the highest, that hundred is now maybe 30, right? Um, you look at those and you might do a second high, medium, low on the highs. And then you maybe you get down to 10 and you're like, okay, this is what we're going to decompose. So high, medium, low can help you narrow it down. But in the end, you need to stack rank them from highest to lowest. Uh, after that, we identify user stories. So there's lots of techniques for doing this. Uh, Scenario-driven story discovery is my favorite. So that's the one I usually teach. In it, you'd write a scenario. 
And then from the scenario, you actually find um, possible stories. So here's a scenario for buying a book in Amazon. You can read through it if you pause, um, but any one of these could become a story. So a user can search for a product, a user can read product details, a user can add project to carts, right? So any one of these can become a story. Um, and then uh, here you can see there's a scenario and then here are the actual stories that we came out with from that scenario. Again, you can pause the video and take a look and see how we came up with that. Um, story mapping is a pretty common technique as well, or journey mapping, some people call it. Not a fan. I find that it is no more effective than, uh, than scenario, but it takes, it's a lot slower. <laughs> so, but it is good for a lot of people around a wall. So that is a nice thing about it. Um, so you can learn more about that from this book, user story mapping. Um, and, uh, after that, we, we, uh, we run out of time. Uh, so going beyond this, you identify, um, you estimate your stories. So we'll cover that in a different video. Um, and then you plan sprint, which we'll cover in a different video, uh, and you split large stories, which we'll cover in a different video. So all those will be in different videos, but there is your basics, um, and the solution intent we talked about already that will be done in a different video as well. So, uh, I think that's pretty much the good stuff here. So just looking to see there's a splitting stuff, solution intent. Yeah, we're good. So, oh, and non-functional requirements, uh, also interesting and covered in a different video. So my name is Anthony Crane. I hope you found this uh, video interesting and useful on your story writing journey.